All right, we are rocking and rolling. Look at that hat, John, the video department. You got that last week? Yeah, I got to represent my, my brother from another mother, Omar El Takori in Vegas. Yes, sir. The man, the myth, the legend. I like it. We're in the video department, baby. Oh, this is for me. Wait, which one's for me? This one? I got my right. team I'm excited, man. Today's going to be a good session. I've got a couple questions for you, some things that I wanted to share with the group. Yeah. Um, but like always, you know, just putting it out there. Anybody has anything that's top of mind, anything that is prevalent in your business today, something you're working on, something you're seeking advice, guidance, mm. um, opinion, just to bounce it off, creative ideas. Everybody in the community is building something or has an influence or their hand in a high level project, high level goal or something that they're gearing towards. So just want to always remember to invite anybody to send anything in the chat. Just drop me a message, text in the community. Feel free to post anything that you're working on, anything that we can be of the most value to you, right? So, you know, something that I've experienced or John or someone in our networks experienced, right? It doesn't just end with John and myself. As I, we started this call today, I was asking him about the hat, right? And, you know, John's got all types of clients. He's got contacts, friends in this business, marketing industry, all of it, right? So leverage this community, leverage myself, leverage John, not only for our expertise, our knowledge, our wins, our failures, our stories, our losses, our gains, but everybody in our network because we do try to build a family and a community wherever we go. So Feel free to jump, drop anything in the chat. Feel free to drop anything in the community at any time. And we'll, we'll create a webinar around what you need. How about that, John? A community that, cre that creates a webinar around what you need. And the cool thing about it is if we don't have the answers, we will bring in someone who does or has accomplished something similar you're seeking. So just want to start off this morning with that, man. Just giving some some getting some feedback from the group but um i've talked to several people in the last couple of weeks john and you know i think a few things have come up for um some of my conversations some some insights that have been shared around marketing and one of the questions i just had for you this morning if you're if you're ready to just dive right in and get rolling let's not waste time um is a lot of people are trying to bring visibility to their value, yeah. right? So I talked to this with some clients. I've talked to this with some folks that just in general conversation, someone, and obviously different businesses have different value, right? So you could have a merch company and sell a product, right? You could have a service. You could um, be an expert in a specific field. You could provide home services or products, right? All these different things. But as a champion of marketing, John, how do you advise someone to bring visibility to their value? Yeah, that's such a great loaded question. And I'm excited to dive into it today. And I hope <laughs> that the information that, that, you know, we communicate here is massively valuable, right? Because you got to, you first got to ask, you know, what is value, right? You got to ask, what is value? What's valuable to somebody? You know, is it valuable for someone to um, to want to purchase something that they don't need, right? Um, or is it valuable for someone that's been literally up at night crying, like just can't sleep? They got to figure out what they got to do to 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 solve a problem. And if someone had the answer to that, would that be more valuable to that person if they could solve that problem or would it be less valuable, right? So like, I think number one, uh, the value, I, I think we're all designed for like, you know, that we're all valuable, correct? Um, now this is just an assumption. So like if your your company or your business is, is based off of just like scamming people, then you're probably not valuable, right? Um, if, you're, if your alignment is creating impact with the work that you do and you think that work is really important to you, then I, I believe that you're really waking up every day to 
want to add value to your clientele or your service or your product or your product development, like you're, you're really trying to solve people's problems. So if you're really desiring to, to help solve people's problems, that's, that's where value is exchanged, right? So the value exchange happens when someone cares more about solving that problem or purchasing that, like whether it's, hey, why do I buy this product? Well, it makes me happy, right? Or it's really solving my problem or it is a brand that makes me look a certain way. Like if I buy it, I'm, I'm an Apple user, right? I got everything Apple, Apple iPhone, Apple iWatch. I'm on a Mac right now. And it's, it's also an aesthetic of like, I'm part of the Apple kind of ecosystem, right? So like, you know, as a creative, when I'm at a coffee shop doing work on my Apple laptop, when people look at me, they're like, oh, that guy's creative or that guy, you know, value, like, cause there's an ass assigned value, right? There's a brand that I'm, ass uh, I'm assigned with or associated with that people will start seeing me like that, that certain way. So, so the value exchange of being part of the Apple economy is like, oh, this person probably does creative work. They probably, so there's an assumption or assigning, right. Of, of, of that. But, you know, when it comes to business, when you're trying to prove your value or, or set your value or people aren't valuing you, it, it's probably because you haven't established what that value said value is. Right. So if you're truly trying to make impact in your business, if you're trying to truly solve problems or make a product that, you know, uh, that, that is valuable, you have to take a look and see like, what will people be willing to exchange their hard earned dollars for to receive whatever it is that you have to give. Right. So if, if you don't have a product or service that people aren't willing to trade money for, where they say, I care more about you solving my problem or your product more than the money in my bank account at a certain extent. Right. <laughs> the value doesn't happen. The exchange doesn't happen. Right. Exchange doesn't happen where like they value their money more than they value working with you. Right. Or like, so, so you have to, uh, what we call stack the value. You know, and today we're going to learn a technique that's really, really going to, I believe it's going to really help, you know, uh, uh, the people that are tuning in on how they could, number one, uh, find the value and number two, communicate that value so that they don't get stuck in the cycle of like, well, I know I'm valuable. I got, I got massive purpose. My product is amazing. My service is great, but I just don't know how to communicate what I do. So that people can understand the value that I bring because there's a lot of competition and I, I kind of do the same thing that other people do, but I know I'm made different. Right. So I hear that a lot where a lot of, you know, folks that, that run a business, they, they have competitors in the market and they're trying to literally copy paste what their competitors are saying and doing in hopes that they could grab that market. But here's the thing, the competitors are doing it better, you know? Yeah. And they're they, 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 <laughs> they put in the practice, they put in the communication, they put in the messaging and they work their field. And today I hope that we have a, that we could give you a tool to, to really help you understand your value and then market it and communicate it over and over and over again. And it's a technique that one of my friends came up with um, a couple of years ago and it's called PDOX and it sounds weird, right? PDOX, <laughs> but it's a technique that's going to help you understand your value, position your value, and communicate that value, right? And if you just do that over and over again, it's about finding the audience that will see the value and then convert that value into a value exchange because you don't want to be serving everybody, right? Not everybody's going to value your service. Not everybody's going to value your product. And sometimes those aren't the people that you just want to work with. You know, Those are the people that you don't really want to buy from you because they don't see the value. So I think a lot of times our struggle for a lot of businesses is like, I need more leads. I need more this. I need more sales. And they'll just take any sales and they're not quality sales. So they end up feeling more stressed out, more anxiety because it wasn't the right audience, right? It wasn't the right problem that they're solving. And I remember doing that, man, that, that you're, the anxiety is the biggest piece that comes with that, right? Because you're, you're, and you said it earlier, like, alignment you know i remember in 2020 when I started yeah. consulting we had four different projects in four completely different areas right and it brought anxiety because it wasn't what we do it wasn't what felt good it wasn't where we wanted to bring the business and it was that stretch for leads you know yeah. um yeah. 
so I think it's so important to your point of like, where are you going and what are you attracting with your messaging and visibility? Correct. So, how, yeah. so how do you, how do you show that visibility in your unique way, I guess, right? Because you said like, okay, you've got competitors over here or you've done your market research and who you're up against or what's kind of, what the pricing is in the market, all those things. And if you just copy it, it's not passionate. It's not you. It's not your vernacular, your verbiage, your messaging. Yeah. So that level of authenticity does matter in the words you choose and vernacular does matter. How do you bring that to light? How do you, again, loaded question. Right. I think <laughs> Missy says such a loaded question for a Monday yeah. morning. <laughs> I know. Monday, hey, welcome to Monday. You know, that's my favorite day, favorite day of the week. It, here's, it, there's Thanks, so many, ways to do that, you know, there's so many ways to, to, to position. I think the, the most authentic way, you know, if you're building, especially if you're just starting, you know, or maybe this is your first year in business, maybe it's your second year in business and you've put a lot of work into the fulfillment side or the service or whatever you provide your product. Um, the, the, the first thing I would do is, is get in proximity, get in proximity to people that you can resonate with, um, that, that under can, can really relate to you that, that, you know, like I would get in proximity and here's the thing you can get in proximity physically, like going to like an event, you know, meeting people in your community, joining a chamber of commerce, I would start getting visible with proximity. The second piece to a proximity is, is digital proximity. How many conversations are you having online? Are you commenting on people that you would think would align with your value? What you would think would align with your business? Are you actually commenting on their content? Are you following their stories? Are you responding and creating opportunities to, to have communicate, like, you know, to have conversation, like authentic conversation, not the, Hey man, I saw your page. I really love what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, this is who I like. You start selling. I remember I got, um, before I used to just get DM'd a lot when automations were huge and I knew it was like automated DMs because they're like, they'll say one thing about your thing, your, your feed. And then they'll tee up with like, what's it look like to, to work with you or get on a call. I'm like, uh, and my response, you know, I, I could sniff these people out. So like my response was like, whoa, why do you want to get married so quickly? You got to take me on a date first. Like I would respond and they're like, oh, oh, and they, they couldn't, they almost like left the conversation. I already knew that they're trying to automate that. And you can't, you got to be authentic. Like you literally got to show up and put in the work. And I know you're going to say, John, that takes so much time. It's like, yeah, building a business takes time. You know what I mean? Building impact takes time. Like why wouldn't you trade off? the time that you put into relationships versus the, well, how many numbers can I get? I need a thousand. Like, I'm just going to blast, blast an ad. And, and, and here's the thing that I think that a lot of uh, people get confused or, or there's a misunderstanding or uh, uh, when it comes to business is like more leads doesn't increase impact, right? More leads sometimes creates more headaches. Cause like people are like this is automated or you can't keep up with them. It's like, if you're just growing and you're on the growth path, Build authentic connections, True. right? Proximity. Yeah. So how do you how do you start doing that? You got to have more conversations. The more conversations you make, the more money you make, right? So like you got to have intentional conversations because number one, you'll build relationships. Number two, you'll understand the actual problem that you're trying to solve for people. So you're doing a lot of research at the same time. So it comes, it's twofold. Number one, you're making relationships. And number two, you're testing out your product fit in the market, right? Your product fit is really important because if no one wants what you have, you got to pivot your, your product. You got to pivot your service. I can't tell you how many iterations and different services I've had to evolve in my company of what we actually did, right? And, and it's just too many to count because it was like, hey, we have this amazing tool, which is creating content. But we've had to learn how to adapt to the market fit, right? What are we actually solving per, for people? Can we package that and not undervalue our, you know, our, our experience in our product, right? But can we also create an entry level for people that want to learn and grow, but they just haven't, they don't have the investment to do that. Can we make a free offer? Like the thing I love about what you're doing, Jim, is this impact effect circle. It's free. And they're getting free value and they're getting in proximity to other business leaders that are solving, are trying to solve the same problems in their business. So there's a community element to it. 
and there is a low hanging fruit element to it where they're you're giving people massive value and that's what i love about this community it's not about like sales first it's about people first right? well i think too it's it's talk just talking about the community it's it's an opportunity for leverage for proximity right we're talking about visibility of value well you've got 80 names in here with emails and contacts and messages go build the relationships right like use that leverage of visibility and visibility of your business right like sitting down and ta talking about business and mm -hmm. selling someone is two different things right but in that time of building a human connection in that time of you know talking about your business with being authentic who you're seeking to help you know and getting feedback well there may be a product fit in that conversation yeah absolutely a absolutely, right? absolutely so you know you're you're gaining the growth you're gaining the relationships you're gaining the back and forth feedback the opinion hey how do you see this product or offer or service you know, does this solve a problem? What would you add? What would you remove? Right. A lot of the conversations you and I have about business, yeah. about where we're going and what we're offering, but doing it in a, in a community of people that are aligned is an opportunity for visibility as well, you know, and like, how do you bring visibility to your value? And I think, you know, John, you're talking about it throughout this whole time is like, you got to communicate it. That's it. You got to yeah. talk about it. And, and you got to talk about it in a way in a, utilizing this community specific, like I wrote down, you know, in-person events, digital communities, social comments, uh, proximity, how you do it in this community is communicating very simple. And this community is built <laughs> so you can ask advice and get feedback and in turn materialize and create more value for what you're trying to bring to other business owners, if that's a product or fit. So it, I, I it, it's interesting, I you know, I, I do want to mention one thing that, that you just brought up to mind is, is I think like as a business owner, I think we overcomplicate things, man. I, I think we truly overcomplicate um, adding value or leads or, you know, because because of the communications piece, maybe a lot of us aren't uh, the best communicators or else, We'd be making a lot of money, right? So I think I think the biggest issue or, or uh, muscle I think we could work on as a community, or even as as entrepreneurs or business owners, is the communication part. And you know, you could ask, you know, my wife. You could ask my wife, hey, how long did it take for John to start communicating properly? Probably like this, this past year. We've been married almost eight years now. So like, it, it takes time to communicate. It takes time to to build that muscle of communication. And if you're not in the you know, arena of practicing communication on a daily basis, you're never going to get better. So you're going to get frustrated because people just don't see the, so you're going to start saying things like, man, I just hate that people don't see the value that I bring. Well, it's because you never led them to, you never communicated them. To, you know what I mean? So like, it's not about like, well, people are just, you know, doing this, blah, blah, blah. Don't put it on people. Take responsibility and ownership and, and say, I need to communicate better. How do I do that? Take courses online. Go on YouTube. There's a ton of free content on YouTube on how to communicate and how to communicate better. Link up with our friend, Dr. Justin Mosley. You know what I mean? He's been on TED Talk a couple of times. You know, so it's like you got to you got to, first of all, understand that communication is a big part of business, because if you don't know how to communicate, not just to get sales or leads, but communicate if you're building a team like your employees, like uh, the biggest struggle that I had the first year in business was I didn't know how to communicate to my creative team on what I needed them to get done. I was just like, well, uh, cause they're creatives and I'm creative. And I'm like, oh man, I was the worst at communication the first year in business. You know what I mean? Like I was the worst. I didn't know how to explain to them um, how to make content that looks better. Right? Like, Hey, I don't know what, you know, what to tell you other than like, let me just show you. So the first couple months I was just showing, I was spending time and they were just watching me edit watching me write copy, watching me do the things because I didn't know how to communicate um, the, the quality control of, of, of making content, right, as a creative. So if, if you're, you know, if you're not seeing the sales that you want or leads or, or communicate or the, the, the connection piece, it's most likely because you have a hard time communicating. So get better at that. And, you know, I, I just think that we need to get better as communicators. I think it's the how best. Do we, John, how do we 
bring that visibility from a marketing standpoint. So our value, what problem we're solving, right? Yeah. But like, how do we bring that in today's world to get as many eyeballs on it? Like, is it something where we just write, hey, this is the problem impact effect solves. This is the problem X, Y, and Z company solves. Like, how do you get that point across simple, concise, direct, but also yeah. have relatability, right? Because just writing, this is the problem and mm -hmm. I solve it. I solve this. It kind of <laughs> may not of, attract it, eyeballs, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, um, a plain Greek yogurt. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's plain, but there's a lot of, you know, value, obviously, like nutrients, but no one knows that because, you know, they want vanilla yogurt. Come on. You know what I mean? They want some strawberry. They want blueberries on it. You know what I mean? They want to get all. My wife and I's conversation that. every time we go, we're getting regular or, <laughs> or vanilla. I'm like, yeah. I can't do regular. <laughs> well, let me, let me, let me break this down for everybody. You know, let me share. I'll, I'll share my screen right now. I, I got some things um, kind of dialed in. And I want to share it and walk everybody through it. And I'm going to share the most important part of that process on how to actually get more visible and, and, and pique the curiosity because number one, you got to understand the psychology of people, the psychology of what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis when they're on this device right here. Right. And what they're wanting to do is be entertained or educated. Right. And what they want to do is get distracted. So if you're not creating, you're consuming, come on, somebody. If you're not creating, something, <laughs> you're consuming it. So if you're trying to reach new business, you're speaking to consumers, okay? And the psychology of consumers is I want to be either entertained or educated. And when they're ready to buy, they're gonna they're gonna purchase your stuff if you're top of mind and if you're constantly showing up. But they if they're they're scrubbing through trying to be entertained at first, and then when they're like they're thinking of like oh I, I forgot I have to solve this problem, and they run into something that was in their feed. That made a lot of sense. They're going to do their due diligence and go to discovery mode. You know what I mean? I think he dropped out, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and, and get into, um, you know, this. So what I'm going to share here is um, I'm going to go ahead and share this real quick. And we got called... kicked out. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. All right, I'm back. All right. I'm going to share my screen here, Jim. P docs. Uh, my friend, Adam, he created this system and I just adopted it. I was like, I just need this to be a part of the way I communicate. Uh, I need it to be part of my language. I need to be part of my culture because PDOX, uh, it's, it's an acronym. Okay. And it's how we write copy. It's how we make content. It's how it's everything. Um, PDOX is a, is a system. It's a formula. It's a framework that I'm going to share with you. And you had said something of like that. That's so funny, but it, there's kind of truth behind it. It's like, do we just tell people what pain we we solve, like what problem we solve? And number one for PDOX is, is pain and problem. Identify that, right? So identify the pain and problem that you solve. Like, and it's not just like a a, a a simple pain that takes like aspirin. You know what I mean? Like if you had a migraine for weeks on end, you're not going to say like, man, you know, I just really need an aspirin every other you know, every other eight hours, like once it gets bad, you're just kind of like, I got to go see a doctor. So a lot of these business owners and people, what they're trying to do is they don't realize that they have this brain migraine thing that has been just needs to be taken a look at. at. They just been popping aspirins all day and they're like, oh, you know, I'm going to suppress the pain. Right? I'm going to suppress the pain. So I'm not talking about those folks that are just like, I'm just suppressing the pain. I just need a quick aspirin. I need a quick fix, you know, um, that, that's not what I'm, I'm trying to talk to unless your product is very, it's a commodity and you're just like, I just need more sales. So I need more eyeballs. Like I don't have a position in the market. I'm just trying to sell these things like hotcakes. Then that's, that works for you. Okay. Giving aspirin away. But I think the audience here that, that we have at impact effect, that, that you're actually trying to solve a big problem where you don't need aspirin. You need a brain surgeon, right? So like you need to consult with a physician. You need to consult with a surgeon and actually take the time to find the root cause and not just give yourself aspirin to, to suppress it. You need to find the root of it and bring it to light and have brain surgery, right? So that's the kind of people, when I talk about pain or problem, like you have to communicate or identify the true root of the pain or problem. The thing that actually keeps people up at night, 
the thing that people cannot, they just are losing sleep over. Okay. They're losing sleep over. Like for instance, I have, I have a, a friend in Vegas and they, they're really creative guys. You know, I, I had, a, I was having a, a cigar session with them and he was telling me, he's like, man, we just can't get enough leads. Like we can't, like we're, we're just having a pipeline problem. And I'm like, well, what, what's your main product? He's like, we, we do same day recap videos for events. I'm like, oh, same day recap videos for events. Like, so, you know, it's a high ticket thing, you know, and I'm like, how do you position it? How do you communicate that y'all do like same day recap videos? Like what's the value that you're bringing? Cause a lot of people are like, well, they take the recap video, they put it on their reel and then they, they, they just go about their business. Like, does it actually bring ROI? Like, how does this actually bring ROI? A recap video. And we were wrestling through it. And, you know, one thing that you'll you'll learn about me, and Jim knows this about me, I love getting in the fight with, with people. I love wrestling things out and poking at, you know, the thing and just being like, what what angle are we going at? So, like, for example, the pain and problem is like, well, we, we put recap videos together, but we're not getting any leads. So like, I was like, you have a communication issue. So to me, you don't make recap videos, right? And let me read that, this. Even though you make recap videos, you actually aren't in the business of making recap videos. And he's like, what are you talking about? We make recap videos. That's what we do. I'm like, no, 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 no. If I was putting on an event and I had a recap video of the event, it is actually – what it's actually doing – when I post it up is creating FOMO for people that didn't show up. Right. And for the people that don't show up, it would be massively beneficial. If I put that reel up where you see everybody dancing, laughing, you see everybody taking notes, you see like a recap of the day to hit it with a like, Hey, don't miss out on the next event. Here's the pre-sale link, get your ticket today. Right. So you're selling FOMO. You're not selling a recap video. You're selling an opportunity to sell pre-sale tickets to your next event. You're selling an opportunity to make more sales and, and stop seeing it as a recap video. It's not a recap video. It is a FOMO piece to generate more sales for your clients for that next event. So they, the real pain and problem is I don't need a recap video. I need a way to generate more sales and visibility, right? So the real pain from the client's perspective is how do I create more sales for my next event or I'm not even aware that I could do that and make pre-sales ticket on the day of my event. Can I sell more tickets for my next event, the day of the event, right? So we had to reposition uh, the, the, the information there of pain and problem. So ask yourself, what is the actual pain and problem? The next thing that you got to ask yourself is what is the desire? What's the desire of the client or the prospect or the person, right? What do they actually want? right? Do they want more sales? Do they want more visibility? Like, what is it that they actually desire? You got to identify that, you know, you got to identify what they desire. The next one after that is what are the obstacles in the way of getting to their desire? What are the obstacles in the way that is letting, not allowing them to achieve the desired goal that they want? So you identify the pain, the problem, right? You're like, okay, I need this and I'm not getting it. The desire is if I if I just get this, if I get more leads, I will close more deals. The obstacle is visibility or my communication or my messaging, right? So the obstacles is like, I, I don't know how to communicate this. I don't know the position that I'm in the market. So I don't know how to market what I what I produce. And um, the, the fourth thing here is the common beliefs. The common beliefs is really, really important because this is where we use hooks right? Hooks is what are people, so the common belief is what is the common belief about your industry, right? What is the common belief about events? What are the common beliefs about your business or your industry, right? When people like, so us, we run a content uh, company and the common beliefs that uh, you're, you know, you're a marketing agency that over promises under delivers, you know, and, and people that have worked with agencies in the past are like, oh, they're just, you know, they're asking for this much and they don't get me actual results. And so the common belief is like there's a, a, a bad taste in people's mouth about content production, you know, media or marketing. There's a bad taste in people's mouth. So what I lean into when I go into uh, making content or copy or design or whatever it is, I lean first on the common beliefs and saying, hey, this is the common belief in the industry. And then I flip it. But... This is what it really is. 
So it's it's almost like a, a, a here's the here's the common belief, but we provide a different solution. And then you touch on the pain points and then desires and obstacles. So like I always, whenever I make content, that's the hook, right? The common belief is the hook. Oh, like if there's a common belief that people are thinking about, you know, in their head, oh, it's just like, you know, one of those guru guys or whatever it is. And this is the sale. Uh, you got to tackle and expose the common belief. And then you got to introduce your own belief, like what you actually believe. So you got to introduce your product, your system, after that. So you hook them with, Hey, I know that people think this, but let me tell you why it's false. Let me tell you why it's, it doesn't work. Let me tell you why, blah, blah, blah. Like whatever the common belief is, go against the grain and introduce your solution and systems, which is the last one is called stack the value, stack the value. Okay. So lean in with common beliefs and then flip it right by understanding what their obstacles are. Hey, like, you know, I know that you're trying to get leads, but you know, the obstacle is it just takes a lot of time. You know, you don't really have a dialed in message. You, you could start going on the obstacles and obstacles and you desire to get, to get on, you know, five to 10 phone calls a day without any, you know, pushback or obstacles. Like they, they just want to know, like, and trust you right away. So, you know, and the pain is like, man, like, you're barely getting three calls a month or you're, you know, there's pains where you're just like, you just haven't got awareness or no one's really paying attention. No one's converting. You might have a lot of website traffic, but no one's getting on the phone, the phone calls or anything like that. Like there's a lot of pain there. And then you go and introduce the value of like, listen, you know, the reason why you're not doing this is because you're not making enough content. You're not, you're not giving enough social proof. You're not showing more testimonials. You're not doing so like you're stacking the value on top of the pain. There's a pain stacking, of like, if there's enough pain, people make a decision, correct? Right. So if, oh, yeah. if people if people feel enough pain, it's going to force them to feel uh, to make a decision. And when you stack the pain, after you do that, you could stack the value, almost make it feel like, wow, why why haven't I found you before? A month ago, people have literally said that to us. It's like, I wish I found you a month ago. Like, I'm going to work with you right away. So like, they'll literally sign contracts. In that first call, like there is this one um, person who 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 makes um who bakes who makes cupcakes, and you know we were uh and I, I got my I got my guy Colson here head of sales over here. We were at their house and we were just talking about you know the pain. Like I literally went through PDocs, and I literally went through this whole process of, of how we how we build rapport and how we show our value. And by the end of it, she's like, it, it wasn't like I want to work with you. It was like which contract do I want to sign? Do I want to sign the low ticket or high ticket contract? And she was like, send it to me. And then she, we sent it right away and we closed the deal right there. Like it was done because I was able to communicate better, right? I was able to communicate the pains, the desires, the obstacles, what are the common beliefs and, and how we stack the value. Right. And, and it was a, it was a home run. Right. So if you can do that, you're going to, you're going to communicate better. You're going to make more sales. You're going to get more visible, but identify what these are and mix, like try to message, put them all together, you know, make a message out of it, right? Start with the common beliefs because that's the hook. You know, you've probably heard X, Y, and Z before, but let me tell you why it doesn't work, right? These are the pains that you've, you've experienced, but you're looking to do this, but this is in the way. And here's what we solve for this situation. So you could use these, little bullet points to literally make your messaging and communication better, right? You could put them all together. You could mix them up. You could start with one. You could rearrange it, you know, and practice and practice your messaging. So that's, that's one way to do it. That's, this is what I use on a daily basis. You know, I rearrange it, see what hits, you know, I test the language. I test the order on, on how I do it, <laughs> but I hope, I hope this helps when communicating. I think it's, it's so um, intentional, right? And and like, as I'm thinking through this on how to create and bring that visibility, I'm thinking of content around each of these topics, right? So like John in his example had that, <clears throat> had that real life situation, went through this all in person at the sales table, closed the deal. Well, how do you market the right people to get to the sales table. And, and I think creating content around these things 
is -hmm. the key and solution to that, you know? Um, and you mentioned some stuff as well. Um, like you had mentioned, you know, um, social proof posts and talking about the problem. How do you stack kind of those say that you were going to release a new product or a new service, uh, or a new offer? Would you literally create content around PDOCs? Like I'm going to put, that'd be a whole campaign. Like I would literally three of messages around the problem and then yeah are you talk about it i would just show them because that's relatable content so you could like you know you could reenact things you know like don't you hate it you know when when you get cold call like you probably your phone's blowing up you know you could you could literally be create as creative as possible so like if the pain is like you know getting cold calls every day and you're just like oh my gosh where how do they get my number how do they get my number and you're just like there trying to pick like say like stop like get rid of my number i hate it and then like your product is about authenticity, about showing up at events and, and, you know, like being in proximity. It's like, Hey, don't you hate getting cold calls? I'd rather build proximity with people that are on the line with, you know? And like, so you're introducing or you're, you're relating to a problem. You're being so relatable and comedy is a big thing too, man. Like when, when you like, don't take yourself too serious. You know what I mean? Like, I think that people desire uh, relatability more than the desire sales pitch you know i mean i i'd rather be most authentically myself and with my humor like you just get what you get with me you know like i'm the same online as i'm offline and i think humor is a great door that can be open that people are under utilizing because who wants to work with a stuffy like you know i don't know just a salesperson like it's hard because they already feel it instead of like Hey, like, I kind of like their vibe. I, I like how funny they are. They're kind of humorous. They're, you know, they don't take themselves too serious. How many, how many people have you worked with that you actually enjoy that they don't take themselves too seriously, but they seriously get things done? Right? Well, I think, too, it's, it's, it's you're attracting two different people, right? Yeah. Like, it, you know, someone who um, is more of an entertainer is going to flock towards some of that content where someone who moves quick. I want the problem solved. I don't want the entertainment may want a bulleted list of your stacked value. Right. And you can create a cool concept in that content and deliver it to those two different people. So my question to you, John is like, do you do obviously being authentic if you're shooting the content and humor and that's fun and that's your personality, but do you ever create content around the other type of person that may resonate as well? Yeah, this is the content, what, what we call like the demonstrations, right? So like if I'm on sales calls or if I'm on calls or if I'm in teaching mode, like I teach my team um, and train them, right? So like the training part, I, I think training content is like, hey, let me just demonstrate to you the value that we bring. Let me walk you through it. Let me just show you. And here's the thing, like sell, like, give away the strategy for free, sell the implementation, right? So like you, if people want bullet point kind of step-by-step, like the biggest things that are searched on YouTube is the how to do X, Y, and Z, how to put on an event, how to do this under budget, how to tie a tie, how to change a tire, how to change the oil. You know what I mean? Like just yesterday, me, me and Chris, you know, Chris, we were, uh, we are changing the oil and we were putting like free on in my truck, you know, just giving a little TLC to my truck, a uh, poor, poor thing, 2002 avalanche, Chevy avalanche, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and we had to go to YouTube and be like, how to change this or how to add free on to, to the conditioner. And like I, the, my go-to was YouTube. And guess what? The first videos I saw, it was demonstrating, like they weren't funny. Like they were, they were information driven. And because I was trying to get to a, a outcome. So, the content, like, yeah, if you're, if you do business and you're, you're kind of lighthearted and you're fun, show that aspect of you, but people want to, people will typically search for something to solve their problems. So show them how you solve people's problems. So you could give away that strategy and be like, well, this is how we do it. All right. Let me just demonstrate how we do it. And I do that on our YouTube channel all the time. Like, Hey, let me show you the stranger to super fan journey. Let me show you this strategy. Let me show you this strategy. And they could see exactly how we could piece the things together and if they want to work with us they're like can y'all just do it for me yeah right can you just help me put it together you know i'm not a pro at that but i've already i know like and trust you because i could see your process and you showed us you know like how you do it 
Um, I don't have time to implement it, but I would love to hire you, right? So yeah. that's where, where the trust comes in. Just making a note here. There was one thing that I wanted to, you know, bring back up on, before we wrap. I know we only got a couple minutes here. You oh, yeah. talked about people wanting to be entertained or educated. Yeah. Um, and you're either creating or consuming. Yeah. So with the entertained or educated, you you know, do you recommend splitting the two? Do you recommend mirror, like, um, bringing it into one piece of content. Uh, I guess my question around that is like this concept of edutainment being yeah. you're entertained and you're educated. Do you believe that people seek both of those in one setting or one or the other? It really depends on, yeah. I struggle with this a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a great question. And here's the thing, like the way I want to make content, the way I, I want to write even like the way I make content, it's almost like I want, I want to make content like I'm having a beer with a friend over a cigar sometimes, you know what I mean? But like, if that's not your brand, then I don't, I don't, I don't really want to push you saying like, Hey, just be funny. Um, there's, you know, the clever, clever versus clear. If there's anything in between that's not working, go with clear. You want to go with clarity versus cleverness. And like the funny stuff is clever, but if it's not clear, then don't do it. You know what I mean? So like, I'd rather go with clarity. Like, let me just be clear than clever. Or try to be funny. If it's not in my realm, if I don't have a funny bone about me and I'm just not a funny guy or like, I'm not, you know, entertaining enough, then it's not my ethos. Like that's just not how I communicate. So I have a lot of engineer friends and let me just tell you, I don't think they're funny at all. You know, like I think that they're very, you know, you got some engineer friends, man. That they're very like nuts and bolts. Like, you know, just give me the details. Like they're connectors. I love them, you know, and I, like they're my good friends. They're close. One of them sitting here, you know what I mean? So like he's funny. Uh, but most, the majority of engineers aren't typically like, you know, they're typically a type. So they're not going to like, unless they really have like a funny sense of humor, which some of them really do. And they're really, they just don't try. They're not intentionally trying to be funny. They just have a funny, I'm just going to leave it at that funny personality just put them in front of a camera and, and let them talk about, you know, the stuff, you know, the, 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 the stuff details. That love, right. But it's funny. Cause like you're an interesting person and that I would listen to, you know, so they're not intentionally funny, but it's pretty entertaining. That's how you get um, the streamer. Um, what's his name? Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Like he's not, he, he's like wired, you know, um, to be like a, a, a smart dude and he's a streamer. But he's fun to watch because he doesn't he's not trying to be funny, but he does funny things because <laughs> of the way he thinks. So I would guess or or help understand like, hey, like if you're trying to intentionally make it entertaining, but it's not coming off that way, steer away from that and go more educational, you know, because I, I think um, and, and this is really important. The first year you ever make content or you're ever trying to produce marketing. The first year, I, I like to call that phase finding your voice. Finding your voice. A lot of people don't give themselves enough grace to find their voice. So they try to do one thing. They tested it and they're like, that didn't work out. So I'm not going to do that again. But you haven't tried it enough. You haven't done it enough. You haven't tested it enough and you haven't given enough time. They're like, I think people's misunderstanding is like they have a, a really, really, really un- like almost like a unlike healthy understanding of how much time it actually takes to produce the perfect message or making content. It's it's it, whatever you think it is. It's ten times that much yeah, on how that iteration. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it takes way more time, way more time to produce content, way more time to just you know. Well, I posted five videos this month and I'm not getting any sales. I'm like. You try, try 50, try, try 500 videos, you know, like it, it just takes more time, more effort and people, they start dropping off when they're like, well, I made three, I did it every week for a whole year. And I'm like, that's not enough time. Then you're, you know, like you got to put in more time. So that first year when you're putting your work in the, in the, uh, the, the gym of content of making content and marketing to get more sales, 
you have to really find your voice through that. You have to put in as much time almost on a daily practice. You know, the whole 10,000 hour rule is, is real. You know, have you put 10,000 hours into marketing and lead, you know, and you're like, well, I didn't go to, you know, I didn't start this to be a marketer. Well, I know, but it comes with the territory. Cause if no, if you have the best product, if you could cure cancer, but you don't know how to market that you could cure cancer, who benefits? Well, that's the thing is that's why marketing is so important and why I want it. You know, I'm so excited to do this call every month. Right. And to pour a value into the community because I, I, you hit it home. It's, it's, you can be the greatest product service provider and never have the impact you wish wanted and desired. Yeah. And that impact doesn't happen because you haven't reached either the right person, the right amount of people, or, you know, accomplish something that you didn't think was ever going to be accomplished. Right. But how you do that is through proximity is through communication, right. identification, solving problems, understanding the desires, mm -hmm. obstacles, common beliefs, yep. and stacking the value, right? I mean, the reality of it is, is we all want, we're all building something so others can experience it, yeah. right? Like, and that's what marketing is. It's, it's attracting those types of people so they can potentially make a decision to experience it or not at a deeper level, so right? Like, you talk about, hey, we can give you the script, we can give you out how to do all this, or we can do it for you, right? Marketing is here, here's some information, but let's come in closer and connect with me, whether that's a call, a sale, whatever you're, whatever you're offering to get closer to understand if there's that fit. So yeah. I think marketing is so important in anything, and, and it's so important in, every aspect of life, right? Like you're marketing yourself every single day. You're marketing who you are, what your last name stands for, like what, however you want to position you or what you stand for is being marketed on a daily basis, right? It's being marketed to your kids. You're, you're, you're advising, you know, your spouse or your significant other boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, right? Like, Anybody you interact with, you're marketing yourself. How are you communicating? How are you positioning and messaging? So I just think it's so important. And, and it's, it's such a massive, marketing is such a massive department. It's such a massive piece of business. It's, it's so drastically important, and it, but yet it's so big. So yeah. how can we each month come in and kind of break something down that will push you forward in understanding and developing your marketing? Because here's the thing, and John said it, you know, it took, you know, the first year is finding your voice. The second year is probably fine tuning, right? The third year is maybe pivoting or transitioning. Like you're always marketing something new or some type of new messaging or some type of communication around that same product or service to expose it to certain people who may have not seen it to where it's not trending in this area or this part of the U S or the world, right? Like there's so many factors that go into it. So I'm just excited to do this every month with you, man. Another just great, great opportunity to learn today and really just simplify um you know i think too like understanding how this navigates not only your product or service but you and how you position it for your brand you know i think that's probably going to be next session um because this was just so important to give that direct overview but yeah. you know Doing this and being behind an engine, a tool, a service, an organization, organization, a company, a brand, you know, being involved with it at that level, right? John just mentioned Colson is his new sales um, associate, right? Like, well, Colson is now coming into that organization and that company and having to understand the value and how it's positioned and how to market it, right? Because he's going to be the one on the sales side. So how to simplify this process to then transition and pass it to a team member, to a new hire, to a new division, new department, 
for those opportunities of growth. Well, you've got to have these, this base down, you got to have this general understanding. And for someone like me who creates offers, um, you know, pretty fairly quickly, John, right? Like, like I create an event, you know, we're having an event Wednesday. I created it la three and a half weeks ago, right? And marketed it the last 10 days. Well, I'm creating so quick, but I often forget the things we just went over the P docs, like, well, what problem is this solving and, and who is desiring this need? And as I stop and st step back and kind of go through these segmentations and understanding, it allows me to navigate and have more better, uh, more better, have better and more better. intentional direct conversations that clearly communicate, clearly attract, and clearly solidify what I'm trying to do. So thanks again, John, for just, in my brain, simplifying it over and over again in a way that's consumable for me as, as the person who's utilizing this information. So I just appreciate how you come in with so much heat, with yet simplistic ways to understand it, you know, like, and I think that's the beauty of, of having you join us every month is we're not going to get into these massively complex jargon like P docs. You wrote it down. I wrote it down, right? Yep. Like it's in, it's in my brain now. Yep. Um, and how do I live it, breathe it, facilitate it? So thank you, brother. I appreciate you jumping on today and just pouring into the community. Yeah, I absolutely love our time together every month and I look forward to these calls every month. You know, it's, it's really about, uh, bringing value and actually solving problems. I, and I love the fact that like, hey, you know, we jump on before and we're like, hey, what are we going to talk about, you know, today? And it's like, well, what what are some challenges that are really challenges in, in everyone's lives right now in business? What, what are you sensing? You know, and, and I love that we get to to tackle those things and actually tackle uh, the, the things that people actually need and not just try to pitch something like this was never, you know, a pitch or anything like that. It's like, hey, this is what this community needs. Let's just deliver, you know, totally. so I enjoy it. Thank you for, for uh, doing this every, every month, brother. And I'm excited for it. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for being here today and everybody listening. Appreciate you just taking a step to create more impact in your business and your life. I mean, that's really what you're doing, showing up, dedicating time out of your day to continue to develop those skills that will grow your business in order to impact and serve others. So thanks for being here, everybody. We'll see you next month. And uh, thanks, John. Again, appreciate you, bro. All right. See ya.